Hi everybody, this is Craig Tanner for the Mindful Eye and the photo of the week on the Daily Critique. This week's photo of the week was created by Dolph, who's an advanced photographer from Texas. Dolph shot this with a Nikon D700 24-70 to 70 zoom lens at 62 millimeters. Um, love this image. To me, it's a very, very powerful image at the level of visual storytelling in a still photograph. And one of the things that I specifically wanted to talk about today as a takeaway or possible takeaway from the video is the idea of archetypes. This is a slide uh, from a presentation on composition that I make uh, at both our location workshops and our weekend workshops. Um, the other items on this list, this is number seven right here, um, they're descriptions of qualities of subjects within our frame as photographers. And this is part of a list of the different weight uh, weights that different subjects might have based on their qualities. You know, uh, so many people that teach design would say that the area or area of highest contrast has the most visual weight, then bright areas, then warm colors, then cool colors, then darker shadowed areas with just a little bit of information in the mind will skip black. And those are sort of uh, six qualities of subjects that are talked about quite a bit in design. And I've added uh, a seventh quality of a subject called archetype and uh, this is the dictionary definition of archetypes. Um, archetypes uh, are ideas that uh, tend to be recognized by all human beings everywhere on the planet and uh, they're very powerful ideas as the definition says they can really serve to organize, direct, and uh, have a big effect on human thought and behavior. Um, if we were movie makers we could talk more about the idea of archetypal myths and rituals, but as still photographers, the idea of both symbols and also um, gestures and expressions of human beings, which would fall in, under the category of instincts of human beings, uh, those are sort of the areas of archetype that I think about quite a bit as a still photographer. And uh, the really interesting thing about archetypal ideas is even though I sort of added at the bottom of the list of these qualities of subjects, if something starts to push towards an archetype, um, the visual power of that can, can far outweigh um, these other ideas uh, that are more connected to things like luminosity um, and color. And uh, so just wanted to uh, show you that definition and specifically talk about archetypes today in the context of uh, Dulce Image. Um, one of the things about this image is it's very graphic, it's very simple, and Dolph is working with uh, high contrast here to direct the eye uh, to, uh, for me, what is the main subject in the image, and that's the way the archetype of these handprints plays out. Uh, there are three of them. Um, just the archetype of the hand itself, incredibly powerful. Um, we've seen things like this um, in our own lifetime over and over and over again, just in terms of the handprint, but uh, the handprint uh, in terms of human communication, if we think about wall art or pictographs or petroglyphs as something that's in our collective consciousness for a very, very long time as a symbol. Something else that's a very powerful archetype here in, in all of art that's playing out is the idea of having a, a very uh, easily recognizable sort of theme or known idea and then having a twist on it. And uh, you have the two handprints and then all of a sudden that morphs into something that not only is different but it's unexpected and uh, has a lot of psychological weight. So here's another archetype. This almost looks like the print of some kind of a claw. And that has a very uh, heavy effect potentially on the viewer. And there are two other archetypes here that are potentially psychologically heavy. One is just the combination of red and black uh, as a color, uh, a pair of colors that's a color scheme that in nature so much of the time is a warning. And the other thing here is um, the opening. The very, very angular and hard edge, and there's an opening, but then we can't see anything. And obviously just the idea of black by itself um, could represent mystery, um, but could also represent the dark side of our thoughts. And when you combine um, these three archetypes in this image, it all starts to have a very, very heavy effect on the viewer visually. And you might be sitting there at home thinking, well, okay, it's easy to talk about these things after the fact, but what does this have to do 
with my photography has a lot to do uh, with just uh, subject selection and as we're going through and if we're wanting to tell visual stories to not just be thinking about the way things look and are they visually pleasing uh, but also uh, to learn more and more and more to see more and more and to think about these other layers of story uh, that are connected uh, to things that could help to um, inform the thought of our viewers and, and uh, not only allow the viewer to move into the image from a physical standpoint, design standpoint, but also uh, from a psychological standpoint. This image is so powerful at the level of archetype, I just wanted to specifically talk about that today. There's something else that's happening here that's in a lot of ways best expressed um, in art by a still photograph, and that's the idea of having a lot of information that's uh, stopped motion so there is no motion which is generally what we associate with photography is sort of freezing a moment in time so most of the image looks like that but then there's this little aspect here of, uh, of implied motion and that is another thing to me about this image that's uh, very very powerful a still photograph probably has the greatest potential to do this to suggest the passage of time with this visual design idea stopped and uh, implied motion within the same frame and it's just something to think about. A lot of times um, shutter speeds of around an eighth of a second or a tenth of a second or a fifteenth of a second are sort of magic uh, for these kinds of uh, juxtapositions. There's so many beautiful textures uh, in this image and uh, uh, the color here is very powerful. Red and black I've already mentioned. White plays in a very powerful way uh, with both black and red and something else I want to mention today as a possible takeaway from the critique is this idea of just coming in with a splash of a third or fourth color idea that again can really create uh, a very powerful uh, psychological layer of information that goes uh, beyond something that may just be sort of a one note color idea image or two note color idea image just this little splash of color here to me has a huge effect on me as the viewer. It's different so it pulls me down there. Colors come with their own emotional weight and psychological baggage and uh, just having this little bit of a color that plays off of the real heaviness of the idea of red and black. Um, you know, this is almost a lilac a color. It's, it's almost the opposite kind of color to me. Um, just having that little bit of it adds another very, very powerful kick to this image. I almost think about this like just um, if I was eating food and tasting and not expecting for there to be sort of a kick of spice somewhere in there and then all of a sudden I get there. It just adds a whole other level of information um, to the experience. Very, very powerful image from Dolph about storytelling. You know, for me when I look at this image um, there's just so many different things that, that I imagine that could be uh, playing out here. And I know from the backstory on this image uh, that this was uh, shot in the context of a workshop that Dolph took and it was photographed on a movie set. And he said he was unsure himself about uh, what actually was going on here. If these were just uh, prints that were made by people that were building the set or if it was actually uh, uh, part of some kind of visual design of the movie itself. Um, and that he was really drawn in uh, by the hands uh, on the canvas. Uh, really great image at the level of storytelling. I really want to say a huge thank you of Dolph for sharing it with us. A couple of program notes and workshop notes. Um, starting next week, uh, we're going to be uh, making the video from the assignments, the top selects from the assignments, in addition to the photo of the week. There's so many images that are getting submitted that I want to share on the photo of the week. And uh, so we're going to go back to a photo of the week each week and then every other week in addition to that uh, there will be a video that will be released where we will highlight uh, the top select or some of the top selects from our community assignment. Sorry about the fall off in content but I just uh, really wore myself out traveling and teaching and right now in the business of trying to get myself ahead a little bit so that uh, when I do take breaks um, we don't have a fall off in content, but lots of new content is on the way. And um, I want to say a huge thank you to all those people who are supporting our workshop program this year. Uh, most of our workshops are full. We do have um, a couple of spaces now, one on each of our street portraiture and next step workshops. They're coming up very shortly. If somebody's listening to this and you'd like to participate in our next step workshop, we still have one space left. It's uh, 
one of my favorite workshops to teach um, and we'd love to see you uh, in Savannah for either the Next Step workshop uh, or our Street Portrait workshop which takes place um, in April and we would also love to see you in uh, Nashville uh, at our final uh, weekend event it's April 17th and 18th. Thank you so much for your support of the Mindful Eye. Thanks again to Dolph for this beautiful image, powerful image, and we hope to see you again real soon.